All right, um, so let me do the third method. The third one is the simple one. It's the simplest one, and that's really the reason we introduce complex impedance. And what I'll tell you is that we don't have enough in-class time for me to demonstrate to you in every possible way. But um, I think I can tell you this much. Um, I can tell you that even using complex exponential, much of this math becomes easier. So that, um, like, I would never expect you to do something like this even in homework. It, takes way too much time. There are way, too many ways of going wrong with it. Once you are using complex exponential, I think may, most of you can do this. It's just, you know, I mean, it's not easy like the one we are going to see now, but this is doable. So using this, you can actually work through all these circuits like, um, like you did a DC circuit. Because with the complex exponential, one of the things it does is it, um, it makes these calculus problems into an algebra problem. Because this e to the i omega t term will almost always cancel out. And you know, this phase factor, you always, uh, you always absorb it into the, the qu constant coefficient in front. So, um, so I would encourage you to, to work out these examples, work out these calculations for other examples involving capacitor and LC circuits. There are questions in your homework. Um, where you can work through that and do that, convince yourself. Um, what I am going to do is, for the you know, remaining 13 minutes, 14 minutes, is that with these expressions for voltage and this expression for current, I can simply use this and it'll use this expression here and it'll give me correct result. This is really uh, the point of defining these complex impedances this way. These are defined in this way to make this expression um, true when you are driving with uh, oscillating voltage or current, which is necessary to have a well-defined omega. Okay. So let me uh, make myself some space here. So I'm not actually going to need any of this loop rule stuff. So I will get rid of the loop rule. And I guess get rid of everything here, uh, except for the answers. I guess uh, I want these answers out here. Yeah, uh, I can get rid of this much. All right, so we do these complex impedances. You work out the circuit problem like these were registers even though you know, inductor is not a register. But what you say is that you treat the inductor like, the re like a register, uh, register with the impedance, with the resistance, I omega L. That's the impedance of the inductor. So let me, well, write it out. The current that's going through the circuit should be the uh, voltage divided by the equivalent impedance. All right. Um, if I'm treating this like a register, then it would be uh, registers in series. So this equivalent impedance would be impedance of a register plus impedance of the um, uh, of the inductor. So this would be the voltage divided by impedance of register plus the impedance of inductor, I omega L. All right, uh, I guess that's my answer. <laughs> my, uh, my current as a function of time is the voltage as a function of time, or V naught e to the i omega t divided by r plus i omega l. Now, staring at this, um, it may not look to you like right now that this sensor is equivalent of this sensor or even the other thing that we wrote down before, that 
i as the complex function is equal to i naught, which was this, v naught over square root of omega squared l squared plus r squared times e to the i phi times e to the i omega t. If you are trying to compare this answer to these answers, right now it might not look quite like it. But this is the part where you have to carefully identify coefficients. So comparing this complex expression with this complex expression, we see this e to the i omega term together, right? Which means this entire complex coefficient must be equal to uh, not just i naught, because it's a complex number. i naught was supposed to be real. So this is equal to my i naught times e to the i phi. So this is the complex coefficient that's going to be equal to this quantity here. So um, how do I, what do I do to simply solve this for i naught? Not divided by exponential, because I don't know what phi is. Yeah? Um, <clears throat> no, 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 no. I, I, it comes down to I don't know what phi is. So I mean, so this is the, you know, the advanced aspect of this approach, because even though you have learned about complex numbers, you haven't been using them. So you don't know the basic operations dealing with them. I do the same thing I did here. I take the modulo squared. This modulo squared, what it does is it gets rid of any, of any kind of complex phase factor. That's the whole point of this absolute value squared. So I do the exact same operation I did before except this time it's a simpler. So, um, so well, let me call this my left-hand side, call this my right-hand side. Actually, I should, probably should, yeah, let me do it that way. So I'm going to take the absolute value square of the left-hand side, and uh, when I do that, so it's a V naught over, this is the real and imaginary part, so it'll be V naught squared over r squared plus omega squared l squared, right? We say that's equal to the right-hand side, uh, modulo squared. So here, let me write it out a little bit more carefully, because you have in this exact way it's written down before. Um, I naught times, so the first, let me write it down this way. So. This will be written down with a complex conjugate times the original complex number itself. So the complex conjugate of this is i naught times e to the minus i phi. And here, the original number itself is i naught times e to the i phi. You see that e to the minus i phi cancels out e to the i phi. That, that, that is the whole point of the, um, of the operation. Get rid of complex phase factors. So when you do that, what you end up with is i naught squared. So, so this is the same thing that we already knew before, that, um, that i naught is equal to uh, square root of this entire quantity, which is v naught over square root of r squared plus omega squared l squared. So that's it, that's the answer. And um, let's see, do I have time to go over? Might as well. So using this expression, you can actually solve for four phi if you wanted to. Um, so so um, anyways, I think I have enough time to actually show you how to work out this phase factor phi. It really uh, comes down to the understanding this is the polar representation. So because, you know, if you write out this e to the i phi using Euler's formula, then this is equal to r cosine phi plus i r 
sine phi. So uh, the approach for solving for phi here is you take this entire complex number, try to express it in this Cartesian format, and when you take the y component or the imaginary component over the real component, imaginary component over the real component, that will give you the magnitude will cancel, and you'll get sine phi over cosine phi. So for a complex number g, this is an expression that you always have. You can always say, um, let's see, this phase factor phi, or rather tangent of this phi, is equal to the imaginary part of complex number divided by the real part of complex number. By the way, for this class, I'm not going to uh, spend too much time on uh, this phase factor. On an exam, I will always give you questions in a way that you can ignore the phase factor, and then if you can, if you can get the magnitude, if you can get, can get this, then that's good enough. But if you want to go one step further and fi find the phase factor, this is what you do. do. Take this uh, complex number, you rationalize it so that you can express it in this format. Everyone here remember how to rationalize a number? Everyone here know how to rationalize a fraction? Okay, sorry, irrational fraction. How do you rationalize a, a fraction that has, let's say, square root on the bottom? Like if you have two over one plus root three, how do you rationalize this? Yeah, conjugate two over one minus root three. It's the same idea here you uh, multiply this by conjugate top and bottom. So I say this is equal to V naught over R plus I omega L times conjugate of this, except complex conjugate. Um, R minus I omega L divided by R minus I omega L. The point of the complex conjugate is that it'll, when multiplied to the original number, it'll get rid of the imaginary part. So this will become well, the same thing you've seen multiple times by now. V naught over um, this thing is R squared plus omega squared L squared. R squared plus omega squared L squared times this. So let me actually write it out uh, in one step. So the real part is V naught times R. And the imaginary part is minus I V naught times omega V naught omega L over r squared plus omega squared l squared. So when you take the ratio of b to a, actually um, this minus sign should be included into b. <laughs> um, you take the ratio of b over a, that's the tangent of phi. And when you take the ratio of b over a, a lot of things will cancel out. The denominator will cancel out. V naught will cancel out, and you'll get only omega L and R. So doing that, you'll get tangent of phi is equal to uh, minus omega L over R. And if you look back to our earlier result, that's the same result we got earlier with a much more complicated method or I guess much more time consuming method. You could say this is equally complicated, but it's complicated in the matter of a sophistication. It's a more sophisticated mathematical technique that will save you a lot of time once you learn how to use it. That's uh, really my justification for introducing it now, once again, acknowledging that it's not standard topic. Um, what I will tell you is that your textbook does have formulas um, for getting like this magnitude and one of the homework problems that I assigned from portable TA actually goes over those formulas. And you know, you can memorize those formulas if you want. That'll get you the correct answers for the uh, exam or you know, have it in your formula sheet. The method of using complex exponentials and complex impedances is how to get those answers without having those formulas memorized. This is the only formula you would have to memorize. This is the only formula you would have to memorize.